Hey, this is Caroline, and we are here at Vanilla Sky Studios with super producer Chuck Harmony. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm fabulous, as always. So let's start off. You have worked with some of R&B superstars, Mary J. Blige, Neo, I can't even think, Rihanna. Who else have you worked with? Who have I missed? Uh, well, recently I've been working with uh, Jesse J. from the UK. It's pretty cool. Her. So yeah. everybody says they have a regret, something which they think, damn, I wish I'd made that call. I wish I'd signed that person. I wish I'd given that check to somebody else. What was yours, Chuck? I think my biggest regret in uh, my tenure in the music business thus far has been uh, not being out front enough, um, not walking the red carpets, not doing interviews, not um, just kind of being a studio rat. And, uh, because now I understand the, the the importance of things like that, the importance of staying on the tip of people's tongue and the importance of staying in the forefront of people's mind uh, because that translates to opportunity of course so i really i really regret that and i'm changing that that's why i'm here doing this interview and i'll do many we more. appreciate <laughs> it yeah yeah so was it ever about the fame for you was that something that you didn't enjoy or was that something you just felt like you didn't want to be a part of yeah i was just you know growing up i was taught to be humble and and being in the limelight that kind of didn't fit in that that particular humble setting mm -hmm. so i kind of shunned it and not really understanding that you could still be humble and do an interview. I'm humble now. I'm doing it. Yeah, of course, of course. So, okay, so what were your ambitions when you started out? Did you ever think, okay, I want to work with this person? Like, I'm sure you never even thought or, or had heard about some of the artists that then you went on to work with. But did you ever think, like, I want to win this award? How how did those change from where you are now? Well, my biggest ambition was ambition in life was to. Uh, for people to like my song, that's all I cared about. Was people liking my song. I didn't. I didn't think much farther than that. I just wanted to play my song in the studio somewhere, and somebody like it. Now, who that person was, I hoped it would be somebody famous. I hope it would be a record exec. But that was really my, my focus is getting people to like my song. And then it it changed to getting my song on the radio. And once that happened, it started to be about. Uh, uh, currently, it's about me. Um, just taking care of my legacy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because as a as a producer, you every song you're building your legacy. So you go from one one song to the next song to the next song. People will remember you by yeah, of course. And, and so and so now I want to make sure that my legacy is complete. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing uh, gospel stuff. I'm doing scoring stuff. I'm doing a lot more pop stuff like with. Uh, People is that coming. weird for you being a predominantly R and B, R and B producer? Do you think it's strange to cross over? No, not at all. Yeah. It's just been a natural progression for you. I've learned about uh, one thing that I've learned in my tenure in music is that it's two kinds of songs: good songs and bad songs. And a good song can live anywhere, and a bad song won't live. You know what I'm saying? So, whether I'm in the studio with Fantasia or Chrisette Michelle or whether I'm in the studio with Celine or, or Jesse J, whoever, you know what I'm saying? Like, you give them a good song, it'll live. Okay, so let me ask you this. Do you think there comes a point when industry patrons such as yourself can, can get a bit jaded by it or do you think there's a time when you're like, actually, you know what, just drop me out of this for a bit. I just want to go and go and have a break and not listen to any music? Definitely. You know, anything that you do for uh, repetitiously for a certain amount of time, it becomes something different than when, what it started. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm in the studio maybe, I would say, well over 200 days out the year. You know what I'm saying? So it, it can become a drag. It can become, um, you can kind of lose some passion. You can kind of lose some focus. You can kind of lose some creativity. What keeps you motivated? Um... Uh, fear. fear. I, I, I would definitely say being afraid of falling completely off keeps me coming here. You know, even when I don't want to, like I, I think about it and I just just come here. You know what I'm saying? And just to, to try yeah. to, to keep it going because yeah. it's. I mean, that's difficult. You know what I'm saying? Like Longevity most people. To your career, mm, most people 
uh, careers last a song or two. You know what I'm saying? Because it's so it's so crowded. So many producers, and so many songwriters, and so many artists, and so music is practically free right now. You know what I'm saying? So um, to to keep my my run of seven years going, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's uh, many more years to come. We oh, hope. Of course. Go keeping that studio grind. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we touched on it earlier the crossover between different genres. Mm -hmm. What do you think of like R and B now? What would you say is your definition of true R and B? Now, the now, stated what what you would have always said is the true definition of R and B. R and B was uh, it, it was it was uh, a composition that entailed feeling. Like R and B always made you feel something, whether it's happy, whether it's sad, whether it made you reminisce. It was it's emotional music. You know what I'm saying? Even if if even if it's up tempo, you feel something. You know what I'm saying? And so, right now, that's missing definitely. And do you think that that's that's obviously you think it's changed in 2013? Then yeah. what do you think the definition now? R and B right now is, I think people are trying to be as cool as possible you know what i'm saying and and that totally takes away from the music when when i see uh uh new r&b artists and some old r&b artists with the gold chains around their neck looking like two chains of future and everything <laughs> else this it's a coolness that they didn't have uh back in the day like marvin Gaye just left his feelings i think it's the glamorization of like the yeah. current culture though you know the the lifestyle yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it's changing for the worse. So as a major contributor to R&B and that sort of music, do you think that you have some sort of responsibility to bring it back for those true lovers of that sort of music? Yeah, I try my best as, as much as I can to get artists to uh, be vulnerable again. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, uh, that's the most important thing, whether, whether you're singing about love, whether you're singing about the club, like, R. Kelly is a perfect example of R&B because no matter what he's saying, he was vulnerable about it. Whether he was singing about feeling on somebody's booty or whether he was singing about I believe believing he could fly, he was vulnerable. Like yeah, he of really let you in. Uh, so tell me, what, what are you listening to at the moment? Like, what do you listen to when you're out of the studio? You're by yourself. You're chilling. Um, I listen to a lot of uh, scoring. I listen to a lot of uh, gospel, like Kirk Franklin is my favorite artist. Mm -hmm. uh, the Curious Case of uh, Benjamin Button is my f favorite movie score, so I listen to that over and over and over again. So, and I listen to John Mayer Continuum all the time. So what do you think of artists such as Drake? You know, he's just dropped the Nothing Was The Same, who, who like dwell in this area of crossing over between the R&B and the hip hop. What do you think about that? I think every R&B artist, especially male, should be taking notes from Drake. Cause he's, Why is that? Because he's being vulnerable in his records. It's just like he's doing R&B when we shunning it. We, we popping bottles in R&B. And he's like, uh, um, hold on tight, we going home. You know what I'm saying? Like he's just being vulnerable. That's what R&B is about. That's why I feel so good. So do you think the evolution for him and like artists such as Drake, others that we can name, like do you think it's been natural? Yeah, I, I don't I don't see any pretentiousness in, in Drake's music. Like I think it's just the most honest thing I've heard in a minute. Him and Kanye. What, why why Kanye? Because they're honest. Like you hear you hear the story. You hear exactly where they are in their lives through their albums. Yeah, a lot of people weren't happy with the Yeezus album. What did you think of it? I appreciated it for what it was. It was his artistic expression, and I appreciated him for taking the chance and having the audacity to be different. Yeah, of course. So you said earlier, you touched on this, you worked with Jesse J, who's one of our UK people. Mm -hmm. Album out in stores. What did you work on with her? I worked on a, a, a ballad called I Miss Her, and it, it was, I'm talking about an amazing artist like after I work with Jesse J, she and I've worked with everybody. She's like in my top three to Why four is it? vocally. What's about her? She's a star. She's uh, a, the consummate star, and she her vocals are incredible. So, what's the process like when you're with somebody like Jesse? When you get in the studio, how do you put something together? Um. Well, my process is always sitting at the piano with the artist and the songwriter, and we just go from there. I never play anybody a track. I never 
have a drum beat already ready. I start at the piano. I, I feel like all great songs start at the piano and guitar. So are there any other UK artists that you're feeling at the moment? Any person you've got your eyes on? Yeah, I just work with them. Ollie Murs. Ollie Murs. <laughs> yeah, go get you're it. You're an Ollie Murs fan. I feel like you're getting a bit puffy on us. I like it. No, I just, I, I just, I feel the need to stretch out because R and B is at a certain place. So I'll give a good song to somebody else. You know? Yeah, definitely. So tell yeah. us, are there any other projects you're working on that you can share with the IMC? Yeah, I'm, uh, I said Jesse Ali. I did some on Daughtry album that comes out next week. That's uh, awesome. I did. Uh, who else? Jasmine Sullivan. Uh, I'm going back in with Neo for his new project. Um, I did something. Luke James. I'm very excited about Luke James. I, we've been in the studio for the last couple of weeks. When are you going to release some new material? <laughs> I don't know. But when we do, it's, we're going to find it's out about it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to tell us. Okay, so we've just wrapped up the International Music Conference 2013, which you have been avidly supporting and helping us out with that. We really appreciate your love. Oh, no problem. So what do you think of like music conferences in general as a platform for new artists and new producers and songwriters? I think it's very helpful. Like I, I wish that when I was coming up and uh, trying to make it in a game that I could have been a part of something like this, you know what I'm saying? Where you can really touch people that are living your dream or doing what you want to do. Like you can hear firsthand what they think or their process or, or how they view things and, and because it all shapes your perception of uh, of music which then shapes you, your creative process which then shapes your music you know what I'm saying it's all a process it's all you're taking it all in to make what eventually becomes your career in music yeah, of course. Well, we'll definitely be seeing you at the International Music Conference 2014. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. I'm, I'm there. So that wraps up our interview with Chuck Harmony. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And tell us, where, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram. When you're not hiding. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can find me on Instagram at Chuck Harmony. Uh, my Twitter. I got two Twitter accounts. Why, Why have you got two? Because one of them was hacked. And that's where most of my followers are, but I don't remember the password. I don't remember the email, so uh, use the new one and don't have any followers. But so it is trying me. to make up for the excuse you have no followers. At Mr. Chuck Harmony, that's that's the Twitter. Thanks so much, and you can check out the interview when it goes live on the imcmagazine.com. Oh,